Have you ever been certain your telephone would ring in the next 10 seconds? Or have you ever walked down a strange street and had the feeling that you knew what lay beyond the unturned corner? Yes? Then you've had a brief encounter with the world of the unknown. You are ready for the actual human experience that follows. Alcoa presents a new and unusual kind of television program that takes you just beyond the world in which you live. Alcoa presents Aluminum. From the world's leading producer, Aluminum Company of America, who creates new and unusual uses of this wondrous metal for the world in which you do live. And now, John Newland takes you one step beyond. Sea is calm now. Guns are silent. Planes in the sky carry nothing more menacing than tourists. All things considered, it's a good time in the world. It wasn't always so good or quiet. Not so very long ago, the sea was a battleground. The sky was filled with death. World War II. It hardly seems real to some of us now. Something consigned to history books. But there were things that happened that never made the history books because they were too incredible to be recorded. That is, except in the memories of the men involved. They remember, and will certainly never forget. How many hits did we get? Two, sir. Nothing serious. All right. Secure all battle stations. Secure all battle stations. Secure all battle stations. Well, I hope it's the last we see of them for a while. Sir, all gun crews report secured. What was the foul up on number one gun? Driscoll came unglued, sir. Well, take him below and have Harris tend to him. I did, sir, but Harris is in no condition to treat a sick dog. Again? Yes, sir, again. The engineering officer reports, sir, the electrical board is out. It'll be at least six hours before repairs are completed. All right, boats. All right, sir. Well, this is sure a lucky day. So for six hours, we just sit here. I wonder how long it'll be before one of their reconnaissance planes spots us. It'd be quite an afternoon, sir. Could be. What do you suppose made young Driscoll crack up? He'll be all right. I'm not worried about him. Harris? Yes. I think I understand, Harris. Well, I don't, sir. I'd throw you overboard. Wouldn't that be against Navy regulations, sir? Knock it off and stand up. That's going to be a little bit of a problem. Knock it off and stand up! Oh, I've had a belly full of you, Harris. I've had you run up to there. 
Put this man in the brig. Aye, aye, sir. Let's go, Harris. All right, gently. Let's go. Come on, brother, gently. Sir? What about Harris? You see him? Yes, I saw him. He was stoned again. I had to put him in the brig. That's the third time in two weeks. May I speak frankly? Since when do you have to ask? I sincerely hope you're going to recommend court martial this time. Harris's behavior is having a detrimental effect on the rest of the men. I know, I know. But you see, Stacy, Harris is trying to... Well, we all have problems. Take over the watch, Mr. Stacy. Aye, sir. Keep your fingers crossed. Six hours sitting here like a fat duck. On your feet, Harris. On your feet! All right, all right. That's all, Bosun. Aye, aye, sir. Harris, you're a pretty intelligent fellow. Do you know what being drunk during a battle means? You know what a court-martial would do to you? Yeah, up against a wall. It bang, bang, bang. Harris, you know, you had me pretty confused. I mean, at first. Why would one of the best men in my ship suddenly turn into the Navy's number one fowler? You drink a little, you forget your troubles. What's wrong with that? You ought to try it, Captain. Maybe you could forget how we're stuck out here all by our lonesomes. Who knows, you might even forget the whole lousy war. Has the drink helped you forget your brother? Yeah, I found out about it a couple of days ago. What loudmouth slob? That's none of your business. Everything on this ship is my business, and don't you ever forget it. How old was he? What are we going to have, a nice little heart-to-heart -heart talk? Nineteen. A rich, full life, huh, Captain? I'm sorry. Who isn't? Everybody's sorry. The Navy Department, my mother, the girl who was in love with him. Nobody's as sorry as me. I talked him into enlisting. You want to have a good laugh while we sit out here on the quiet Pacific? This kid brother of mine decided he wasn't going to fight. He and his girl were going to get married and they were going to be medical missionaries. Take penicillin and the word of the Lord to the Hottentots. After Pearl Harbor, I had a nice long talk with little brother. Made him see the error of his ways. You should have heard me, Captain. You would have been real proud. I used every cliché in the book. I didn't miss a one. You have to do God's work with a gun before you can do it with a medicine and a hymn book. I even said that. Well, isn't that about true? Now, Captain, you're not going to tell me my kid brother died for any noble cause. Come on, he died because a bomb exploded, period. End of report. You really think that's the end of it? I mean, for him. What else is there? You mean like up yonder? Who knows? I know. <laughs> There's nothing. Nothing except what you can see and hear and touch, and you can quote me. This is real. This lousy ship, this stinking brig. You and that little gold braid. That's real. There isn't anything else. There's nothing else. That's also real, Harris. And if that's the only reality, God help us. If you have to hate somebody for killing your brother, try hating the enemy.
Let's get him to the wardroom. Be very, very careful with him. But, sir, you know we're under strict orders not to break radio silence. Just do as I tell you. Contact the heavy cruiser Athena and tell them I want to talk to their chief surgeon. Captain Madison speaking, senior medical officer. Can I help you? This is Lieutenant Commander Stacy. Commander Fielding, our skipper, is badly hurt. He's bleeding to death. We don't know what to do. Fielding? Bill Fielding? Well, isn't there anybody aboard who... We've got nobody. Nobody? There's a foul up in the brig who's supposed to be a pharmacist's mate, and that's all. What's his rating? Before we busted him, he was a pharmacist's mate first class. Send him up to the radio shack. I want to talk to him. Sir, he's hopeless. Mr. Stacy, I'm afraid he's the only hope you have. On your feet, Harris. Welcome to my home away from home, Mr. Stacy. On your feet. You gonna throw me in the ocean like you promised? Move, Harris. shrapnel wound in his neck. We need to know just how serious this is. Now, wait a minute. I'm no doctor. You check it, Harris. Wow. Harris is with me now. Here he is. Tell him what you told me. I examined Commander Fielding. What did you find, Harris? He's got a hunk of shrapnel in his neck. Exactly where? It's on the left side, a couple of inches above the shoulder. How bad's the bleeding? Well, it's pretty bad. Mr. Stacy tells me you're a pharmacist mate first class. I was. At the moment, I'm a prisoner of war. Stop clowning. What do you want him to do, sir? How long will it take to rig a loudspeaker in the wardroom? A couple of minutes. Get some men on that. Good. Now have Harris break out the instruments and start scrubbing. Contact me later. Yes, sir. What's he talking about? What for? Get to the wardroom on the double. What for? Get to the wardroom, Harris! But the way I feel, I couldn't take the nail out of a bedpost. What if I say I just won't do it? What are you going to do, shoot me? You're going to do it. Look, can I get this through your head? Even if I was feeling okay, I couldn't do it. Madison's one of the best surgeons in the fleet. If he thinks it might work, that's good enough for me. Yeah, but the skipper's not a bad guy. This is like killing him. And if we do nothing, what happens then? Here. We're ready, sir. Have you started the plasma? Yes, sir. Look, sir, I got the shake so bad, I can't do this. Is he still unconscious? Did you hear what I said? Is he still unconscious? Yes, yes. All right, good. Now, we can't risk using anesthetic in this condition. Sir, will you please listen to me? Now, you listen to me. This is tough. We're stuck. You're going to do it. You're going to follow my instructions quickly and carefully. You're going to do exactly what I tell you to do. Your skipper happens to be a, a very good friend of mine. Okay, let's get on with it. Let's get the thing over with. All right, now. Get some Kelly hemostats from the tray. Yes, sir. Open the sterilizer and get those hemostats and put them in the alcohol.
All right, sir. Now, swab down the wound with antiseptic and drape the area with sterile towels. Okay, sir, that's, that's done. Sir, Dr. Madison? Dr. Madison, are you there? Yes. All right now, Harris. The first step is to clamp off the small veins, tie them with a the suture. You'll see which ones I mean when you begin. If we're lucky, you'll have no difficulty locating them. Put another hemostat in there. Okay, sir. Now you should be able to locate the fragment of shrapnel by gently probing the area. Begin. You better find it. Look, will you wipe my forehead, please? Have you found the fragment? Yeah, I found it. What's the exact position? It's just left of the juggler vein. I'm almost touching it. I was afraid of that. Now listen closely, Harris. That's the critical point. You mustn't, under any circumstances, allow the juggler to be severed. Now, the edges of the shrapnel are undoubtedly jagged. It must be removed with extreme caution. Okay, okay. Now, don't get rattled, Harris. Yeah, that's easy to say. Just take it easy for a couple of seconds. Take a couple of deep breaths. Yeah, take a couple of deep breaths. What's that gonna do, huh? Harris. Okay, let's go. Let's get started. All right. The veins are tied? Yes, they're tied. Very well. Now, grasp the fragment with the hemostat. Gently, firmly. Yeah. I had it. It slipped away. Try again, Harris. Now, try to be just a bit firmer. Once you have the clamp around the fragment. It is jagged, isn't it? It's like a top of a tin can. Are you all right, Harris? Yeah, I got it now. Good. Now, the removal of the fragment is the most delicate part of the job. Now, you've got to let me guide you. One wrong move. What is it? What's that? I don't know, they've broken contact. Oh, not now! Oh, come on, not now! Well, if we don't get that thing fixed, you'll die. I'll go up to the radio shack and try to get through. Don't try anything by yourself, you hear me? Oh, hurry, sir! Hurry! Oh. Oh, come on. Come on, please. What happened? I don't know, sir. The Athena just quit sending. Why? My God, why? It sounded like she was under attack. Maybe they knocked the antenna out. I haven't been able to raise a thing. Contact one of the other ships. Anyone, anyone. Find out what happened. I'll try, sir. Dr. Madison, for God's sake. Come on, please. Harris? Harris? Yes, sir. What happened? We lost contact. Is Fielding still all right? 
Yeah, he's still breathing. Well, let's get on with it. Oh, the clamp slipped. Look, I'll have to reach the fragment again. Okay, I got it. All right. Now begin to withdraw the shrapnel. Very slowly. Straight toward you. That's it. No, straight toward you. Carefully. Stop. Oh. I mean, I think he's gaining consciousness. That did not happen, Harris. He could move and lacerate the jugular. Now hold the fragment exactly as it is. Do you understand? Be very calm. It's okay, we're in luck. He's passed out again. Slowly. Firmly pull slightly upward on the fragment. So. Good. Now never take your eyes off the jugular. Up. Now. Straight again. Straight toward you. That's it. I got it. You're not finished yet, Harris. Now. You must tie off the deep bleeders as you did the outer ones. Use the hemostats to clamp them off. Okay. Yes, sir. What next? Dr. Madison, what kind of bandage do I put on? Harris. What next? Yeah. I told you not to go on without Madison. I didn't. What do you mean you didn't? He guided me every step of the way. I couldn't have done it without him. We contacted the Dayton. The Athena received two direct hits. One bomb caught the radio room. Killed everybody instantly. Everybody. What? It's impossible. I couldn't have done this without him. He guided me every step of the way. Harris, are you out of your mind? There couldn't have been a sound out of that loudspeaker. Dr. Madison was killed ten minutes ago. Lieutenant Commander Stacy was right about one thing. The heavy cruiser USS Athena did take two direct bomb hits from enemy aircraft at 1040 hours, March the 22nd, 1944. One of the bombs knocked out the communication system of the ship, at the same time killing radio man first class Tom McCrory and Captain Clyde Madison, the senior medical officer aboard the USS Athena. I suppose, too, that we reasonable people must agree with Lieutenant Commander Stacy on another count. After Madison was killed, the further transmission of his voice was absolutely impossible. But it was also absolutely impossible for pharmacist mate Harris, an untrained man, to complete this final and most complicated stage of the operation without his voice. To really explain what happened in that hot, steamy wardroom, we cannot look simply to logic or reason, can we? I can only tell you that there is now living in Southern California, a retired naval officer who has a word for it. His word is miracle. 